this is a deep focus shot, meaning which that elements in the foreground, the middle ground, as well as the background are in clear, crisp focus. To achieve a shot like this, one needs the right combination of the lens, or rather the focal length of the lens, the lens aperture size, and also a sufficient amount of lighting. Now, the first instinct of the cinematographer in achieving a look like this is to choose a wide angle lens with a very small focal length, stop down on the aperture as far as possible, and then compensate for the lack of exposure by a sufficient amount of lighting. To get a precise idea about the values these parameters should take, I used this depth of field application from photopills.com. Now I know that I am at a distance of about 60 centimeters from the camera, while the furnitures and TV set on the back are about 3 meters from the camera. Upon entering my camera model, my lens's focal length, and mind you, this is not the 35mm equivalent value, I play around with the numbers a little bit to get a subject focusing distance of 1 meter at an aperture size of f10 with a depth of field extending from 57 centimeters all the way to 4.18 meters in front of the lens, which is well beyond the far wall. Now the deep focus shot can find several uses in cinema. Here's one of my favorite use of deep focus. This is a scene from Satyajit Rai's 1989 film Ganoshotru or An Enemy of the People. We see the good doctor Ashok Gupta in the middle arguing with the editor of a local newspaper who is on frame left in the background. The editor has gone back on his promise of publishing the doctor's report which sought to warn the citizens about the contamination of the underground water pipeline and is also polluting the holy water in the local temple. In the foreground, we see the municipality chairman and the doctor's younger brother Nishit, who uses his power and influence to silence the press and talk the editor out of publishing the article as it will tarnish both the city and the temple's image. Clearly, the chairman is the dominating figure on account of his power, and Rai captures exactly that in this shot, giving him the biggest scale while the other two are almost belittled and treated as insignificant. Nishit clearly holds more weight and dominates the scene. Another use of the deep focus shot is to convey a sense of forced perspective. Now, as you can see in this shot, I, being closer to the camera, have a bigger scale in the frame compared to my father who is sitting in the background watching the telly. This apparent difference in scale and the fact that all subjects are in focus can be used to visually convey that one character is significantly bigger than the other, like a giant or a monster preying on a human being as we see in so many fantasy films. And the coolest thing about it is, it's all done in camera, without any use of compositing or keying, etc. Whatever be the use of deep focus in cinema, it is quite fascinating to know that one can create this effect in a rather homegrown environment by a clever use of the camera lens, the aperture, and also a good knowledge of the hyperfocal distance. Now just a few things before I end this video. First, remember I said in the beginning that objects in the foreground, middle ground, and background are in clear, crisp focus in a deep focus shot? Well, that's not entirely true. This is because of the very definition of the depth of field, which is the region on both sides of the focal plane in front of the camera where objects are acceptably in focus. Now that word acceptably here is key. And what that means is that although those light rays from the objects never really converge to an actual point, the rays are close enough to give us the impression that the objects are in focus. Secondly, we all know that our camera sensors have a fixed resolution. Now that means that objects closer to the camera will have more pixels dedicated to resolving their details compared to objects farther away. This might result in slightly blurry edges for those far away objects, even though those objects are well within the depth of field. These are all practical obstacles and the challenge lies in skillfully maneuvering around them to get the effect that you want. Also, you might have noticed that there is quite some visual noise in the shot. And yes, I plead guilty to bumping up my ISO to get an acceptable amount of exposure. This was after all done at home with limited light and resources. So yes, I will do a future video on deep focus where I can get the noise in check while getting the right amount of exposure. That's all the time we have for today. I hope you liked this video. If you did, do please check out my other videos on my Instagram channel and also my YouTube channel. Until next time, I am Shomodipto from Shomodipto Presents. Thank you and have a nice day.